welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me tonight. Settle back for what's going to be an exciting show with legendary broadcaster. And we'll also be talking to someone that's helping to raise funds for Kyiv Pride in the Ukraine. My first guest, though, is someone who's dominated the radio for years, also a writer and a producer, and now producing a brilliant play that's receiving rave reviews. Please welcome to the show, Mike Reed. Mike, welcome to the show. I'm really sorry I don't have any Has trousers. He... <laughs> I do all those things, but gonna... I have no trousers. It's extraordinary. Say, have you been playing tennis since I last saw you? <laughs> no. I, to be honest, folks, uh, she said, well, you take your trousers off, and I got here, so well, I did. that's it. What can I just you do? comply. Why not? It's a show. You know? Never argue with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike, lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Okay. And Mike, let's talk about your play, first of all. It's, it's receiving some really, really good reviews. Yeah, it was an interesting one. I mean, I've had a lot of musicals on stage this one i did in between the breakfast show and doing talking books i needed something in the middle so oh, i was playing uh, eric coates music which my grandfather loved he was the king of light classical music he wrote the jam buster theme he wrote uh, the nice bridge march uh, the desert island disc music and i've always loved his music because i heard it you know through my grandfather and um i started putting words to it on the journey and within six weeks i'd finished the whole thing it just almost wrote itself and afterwards, I discovered that the British media, the press in the late 30s and into the 40s had said to Eric Coates, you are our Richard Rogers. You should be writing musicals for the stage. And he was like, mm, he different yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> never did. Died in 57. Never wrote a musical. So uh, the man that was born in 1886 has just had his first musical on stage. And I just hope he'd be <laughs> pleased with it. But it did seem to dovetail. I'm, I always think with writing that a, a bad lyric can ruin a terrific melody in the other mm. way around. It has to be a perfect marriage for it to work. Yes. And it seemed to work very well. Our director said, it's as if the lyrics have been written at the time. I said, you mean they're old fashioned? He said, no, no, they just yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And as I say, rave reviews. People are really liking it, which, yeah. which is great. So I rave more than anybody. Quite um, right. One, one songwriter, uh, he, he, after he put on Facebook the following day, he said, I was thunderstruck. He said, you know, I write songs. I heard this song. He said, and it was like hearing Barbara Streisand singing Send in the Clouds for the very first time. And I thought, oh, what that's a, lovely a very thing to compliment. Say. Exactly. That is fantastic. Now, who's in it? Who's starring in the show? Uh, well, Lee John was in it from Imagination. Peter Straker, who's done a lot in the West End from Hair onwards. So they're both great. So we had a really, really good cast. A great choreographer, great director. Uh, Rachel Lizzie Brighton was the director. So yeah, it was, it was, it was terrific. And a really good cast of people worked well. And uh, then Bill Kenwright said, well, let's, let's do it at Theatre Royal Windsor. So we're looking, I don't know the dates yet, but we're no. looking at doing it at the Theatre Royal, Wonderful. which will be great because that's being at each of us a 200 seater, this is a 750 seater. Mm. Uh, and I've been there before. I've done Panto there for my sins, which I was coerced into <laughs> with Basil Brush. What did you play? Uh, I played, the first time I played the king. <laughs> yes. You know, I used to get those roles when I was a kid. So I was on stage from the age of eight. Oh, can't you maybe something more amusing than the king or the prince <laughs> the whole time? But I was the king. And the one time I rushed on, I was in the dressing room, and I thought, I meant to be on. And my tights were still on my ankles and my shirt was hanging out. Oh no, I raced on stage looking totally disheveled. <laughs> and, uh, and I delivered my line and the, the dame said, we did your line about 30 seconds ago, love. Why don't you go off and get changed properly and come back? Of course, the audience love that. They love it. And then in Dick Whittington, I played the alderman, northern alderman, rather bluff character like that. And uh, his twin brother, who was an Irish sea captain. Oh. So it was difficult trying to remember who I was yes, half the time. Right. And one time I ran off, came on the wrong costume, wrong voice, and the audience fell about, so I kept it in. <laughs> Working with Basil is always good, though. I was going to always say, that must have been Basil. such good fun. Yeah, yeah. He is extraordinary. I oh. really think, I, I said to him, he didn't answer, I said, have you had a bit of work done, Baz? Because you're looking pretty good. Uh, he said, oh, Mr. Mike, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> I went to his costume fitting once with him in Windsor. And all these little jackets like, on the rail. Oh, I love it. How I cute. Love it. It's like being in a doll's house. <laughs> So like, you'd clearly love your writing, clearly love your producing, um, but obviously people who don't are not aware of perhaps you're doing that, but you've been a broadcaster for so many years and that's still one of your loves, isn't it? It's still one of yeah. your passions. Yeah, I do a breakfast show every day and uh, now we've got three TV shows a week, so it's a bit crazy. But yeah, you know, and people say, oh, isn't it stressful? I said, no, if it's something you enjoy doing and you can do it, then it's not. I mean, I think if you're confident about what you do, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. Confident is being able to do the job, enjoying it. Arrogance is showing off about it. You know, we're so lucky just being able to do stuff, get up every morning and yeah, I love it. <laughs> you get up at six. I said, I know, but I love it. Yeah. Great, you know. <laughs> which is great. Where'd you get your energy from, Mark? You've got so much energy, which is lovely. 
Oh, I don't know. I think it's passion and enthusiasm. If you're passionate about something, then I think that gives you the energy, really. If you're not, if it's a drudge, it's something you don't want to do, you're probably leaden-footed and go, oh, I really don't want to do that, I don't want to do that. But it's stuff you love doing, yeah. then, then why not? You know? and, it's and has it changed much over the years, broadcasting? Yeah, it has. I think there used to be probably quite a bit of freedom. The DJ was really part of the music process, and they're not so much now. I try to remain so, uh, even to the extent of taking far, far less money. I prefer to be on the radio, enjoying yes. myself. I prefer to do a, a job that I love in the way that I love. And a lot of people are doing a job they love now in a way that they don't. Mm. And I think that's dissatisfying. Some radio stations, they choose all the records and they don't oh, have yeah, a say yeah. at all. You're basically told what to play. Yes. Uh, and that's not me. I've always been, even though I was BBC for many years, and so now, I've always been a bit anti-establishment, not through musical perversity no not deliberately just because of what i feel yes that's all you oh you're you know you're being awkward and wanting to i said no 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 uh, i've got good ears i can hear music i know when a song's good um and, and the heritage chart which has just been on before this yes, show yes of course there's some really good songs in the top 10 at the moment you've got texas you've got the pet shop boys you've got nick kershaw you've got paul young um there's some really 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 good songs in there texas you know uh, and people are saying well, why isn't anyone else playing these songs? Mm. It's a shame, really, because these songs are so good. But, you know, you don't then you don't hear them very often. You know, you hear them every now and again. But as you say, with your charts, you have the opportunity to, to, to play what you love and what the audience loves. Yeah, and also the great new music by heritage artists that no one else is playing. And they're still making some of the best music of their lives. Uh, they really are. It's frustrating for them. They're touring, but nobody's playing their new music. They play their old hits, but not the new stuff, and it's seriously good. Is there anybody that you you really like listening to, like on a daily basis? Is there a band or somebody, an artist that you play all the time? I have very, very, very broad taste in music. Mm. I mean, really broad taste. You know, I could listen to some old folk music from the 1860s, say, uh, Stephen Foster from the same period, mm. uh, do what music, blues, <laughs> uh, anything really. If I like it, if it's good, that's what I think. With a lot of radio stations, they say, oh, well, we don't play that, people will turn off. They say, I don't think they will. If it's good, why would people turn off? If they trust you yes. uh, as a broadcaster and what you're playing, they go, oh, there's be a reason he's playing yes, it. Yes, exactly. Know, why would they turn off? They, if you're going to run away in their droves if you play something that only got to number, you know, 34 in 1969 or so. It's not always the case. Yeah, but a hit can be a hit to somebody, whether it reaches number one or in the top 10. If you like the music, you like the music, don't you? And that's you it. You do. And uh, somebody said recently, uh, we like listening to your programme because you often play us music we didn't know we wanted to hear. Yes, that's right. Which is, yeah. I thought was a lovely That's phrase. a lovely compliment. Now, the pop quiz, Mike, let's talk about the pop quiz because that's making, I mean, it's been around for how many years? When did you first Roy, did start the doing 80s. that? We did it in the 80s. And, and, you know, I said to him, look, if you're never going to show it, I'll try and buy it from you. Oh, it's too complicated. So we went round round the houses. And I said, well, why don't you show it again? We went round the houses and nothing <laughs> happened. And suddenly, it's a lot of Sunday. Yes. Uh, it's on. It's just recently uh, come on again, hasn't it? I don't know how many they're running. Did they uh, tell you it was going to come on? Or no. No. <laughs> no, the listeners told me. They said, do you know Pop was has started? And I said, yeah. no. So, since then, I've been in touch with of BBC course. Four and we've chatted yeah. about things. But last week, we had George, the young George Michael was on uh, with Simon Kirk from Bad Company, Hazel O'Connor with Six Foot High Hair. Great. Um, then gets Buster Blood Vessel from Bad Manners, uh, Jules Holland and Bill Bruford from Yes. No. It's interesting because these people you only see normally in an interview situation or a performing situation. You don't see them in any other one where they're putting their head on the block and going, oh, go on and grill me, yes. make, make a fool yeah. of me. Um, and you don't see those people together. When do those six people, yeah. or indeed I think uh, the next one is Cliff, Mickey Dolenz, Cheryl Baker, Nick Haywood, uh, Stuart Adamson from Skids, who died sadly a long time ago, Hal Linders from Dire Straits. When are those six yeah, people ever in the to same together. room together? Yes, isn't it so wonderful? Never. Uh, so it's interesting for, to see the interaction for those, those people. And has the feedback from the show been really good so far? I know it's only just started, but... Yeah, it has. Yeah. We were trending on Twitter for a few hours on Sunday night when it went out. I that's always think that's great. a good mark. We that's were, a good mark. Uh, nationally, uh, The Storm, uh, which is meant to be brewing, and Pop Quiz uh, were, were trending. So I thought <laughs> if we were as big as The Storm... It's a big as The Storm, that, that, yeah, that's that good. Great. And, and long may that continue. Have they said they're going to continue that, Mike? Is it a, a series they're doing? Or I hope so. Yes. They've shown two. I sort of peer around the corner week <laughs> by week to see. It would be, it'd be crazy not to because mm. they have 62 shows. And people, you know, members of Queen, the Rolling Stones, you know, uh, Cliff's on there as well. I mean, uh, 
even Morrissey. When do you get Morrissey on a panel game? Like, <laughs> come on. I mean, that's just unheard of. And you wouldn't hear or see those people do those things, as you said, would you? On any no. other show. I can't think of another show where you would. That's right. And it was an era when, when you look, they're not being cynical. They're not coming on. Uh, and sometimes the Buzzcocks, which I did a couple of times, there's an air of like, you know, yes. feigned cool and, and yes. a bit of cynicism and all the rest of it. Uh, but with that, even with George Michael last week, he's like thoroughly enjoying himself Excellent. and all having a laugh. We're going to take a break. Uh, so come back and join me again in just a minute. Welcome back. And I'm still here with the lovely Mike Reed. Mike, before the break, we were talking about pop quiz, which it, it, that's just brilliant. But of course, I want to talk about now your writing, because I mean, you write so many songs. You write such a lot of things, actually. But Donny Most, let's talk about Donny. I didn't realise that you wrote the song that is just going to be his latest single. Yeah, it's the title of his album as well, New York High. Um, he does a very Sinatra, but it's a very Sinatra type song, New York High. Uh, I wrote it in that vein, you know, the the Stork Club, the Waldorf Hotel, that old yes. New York feel. And he's used that on the cover, that he's flying above New York, yes. New York High. Uh, and it's great. When you're writing it, you think, I've got something here. And you kind of know whether it's a song that's okay or rather special or very good. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, did he approach you or did you approach him? I We'd... think it was through an intermediary yes. uh, who said he was looking for songs. And I said... Uh, what kind of stuff does he do? Mm. Uh, because you have to pitch it right, you can get it wrong. Mm. Um, you know, someone like Cliff's done three of my songs, but I've never done it off the back of a tennis match or a dinner and said, oh, by the way, I've always done it strictly as business um, so that if he doesn't like it, it's fine. It's yes. separate from, from your yes. friendship. Uh, so I play the song, we heard the lyrics, they play it again. Then, then I put a backing track on there in case they want to sing along with it. Um, that's, that's a good way to do it, to do it as a business thing. Yes. So... I find out what the album is that's coming up, who's producing it. What, there's no point in somebody saying, oh, it's a great song for Cliff. Yeah, but he's doing a soul album next or he's doing a gospel album next. So it wouldn't be right for that. So it's good. Like any shopkeeper, it's knowing your market. Yes. You know, there's no point in putting potatoes in the window if nobody likes potatoes uh, or they're in, into cucumbers at that moment. Um, so, yeah, I, I try and pitch it right. And I sent this song and they said, oh, yeah, he loves it. He loves it. And there's another song I pitched to a, an actor who did a lot of James Bond stuff. He does that similar Sinatra stuff. And he said, yeah, I like it. I want it. So I've got two covers this year oh, in America, great. which is good. But which is um, wonderful. Yeah. And as you say, he's called it the title of his album, his I know. Own, which is wonderful. I know. That's Was that a surprise? Did he tell you that or did he just? No, did no he just I saw it? it when he put it on yeah. social media. <laughs> I thought, oh, it's the title of the album. Good old well. social That's media. That's... Yeah, I know, it's brilliant. He, oh. he did a really, really good job on it as well. Yeah, which is lovely. So yeah. tell us about your book. Yes, my, my new one. It's my. Thousand Years of a London yeah, my Street. My 41st book, this mm. one, believe it or not. Wow. How I get time to write, I have no idea. I don't know. Um, and it's a hell of a lot of words. The, the first one in the series was A Thousand Years of a London Street, Denmark Street. And this is A Thousand Years of a London Street, Cheapside. Uh, it meant to be a series of six. I've nearly finished Piccadilly, which will be next. Uh, but yeah, Cheapside's out in July. We're launching in Cheapside, uh, St. Mary LeBeau uh, Church yes, on there. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting writing. It is like going along the street and opening a door to history, going further and further back in that house or that dwelling or what have you. Uh, it, it, Cheapside gets a bit muddy, of course, after 1666 because it was virtually razed to the ground uh, with a great fire. Uh, and thereby hung a problem in terms of numbering. So often it's not just literary, it's mathematical. You're trying to work out exactly what was where because the, the people that owned properties were told by the mayor, uh, you've got to build within a year, otherwise you forfeit your property or site to the city. It's like, oh, so people got them up really quickly. Mm. Uh, otherwise they'd lose them. You know, they'd, they'd have to forfeit their site. So Ren's idea of having this great Parisian, uh, you know, thoroughfares, you know, all laid out with grand avenues uh, didn't 
to come to fruition simply because there was people no time. had to get their houses up pretty quickly yes. in order to retain them. They had to build, find out where their site was on the ashes. We well, had to try to work out where it was uh, oh. and then rebuild quickly. And you lo always loved history, Mike? Is that something that's yeah. been a passion yeah, of yours? Yeah, I have. We're touring around the country. People always say, oh, it's like being with a tour guide. You go, do you know down <laughs> here? It's like, yeah, OK. So I, I, try and, I try and wear my knowledge lightly. People go, yeah, 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 enough now. Yeah, I was going right, to say, you're not one of those annoying people that, oh, look at that. Oh, oh God. Gosh. <laughs> it's interest, really. I mean, I'm just sort of interested yeah, in those things. Yeah. I think it's like anything, isn't it? Um, you know, there are six million things I'm hopeless at, but I yes. avoid them. Yeah, it exactly. much, makes life much easier. Exactly. Yeah. So the next one is a series of six. So yeah. you've done, this is the third Denmark one. Denmark Street, this is Cheapside. Cheapside. And one probably next year will be Piccadilly. Piccadilly, yeah. wonderful. And it's have you time. chosen the next three? Or? Uh, it's difficult, really, mm -hmm. of how many streets you can actually get a yes. thousand years out of. Piccadilly is a bit of a struggle. It's a, not a cheat, but it was a trackway going out of London. So yes. Yeah. So what about the Mall that, reads, that leads up to Buckingham Palace? Could you? No, not no? that old. Of course, uh, Buckingham House, that was a. Uh, they grew mulberries there for a long time yeah. and stuff like that. So, no, not that old. That's an um, so even Oxford Street, there's a trackway. Yeah. Downing Street would work because I think the Romans were there at one point as well. But of course, it turns out then to be a book about prime ministers. Yes. And Anthony Salston yeah. has done the, the epic book yes. about prime ministers. So uh, I couldn't better that. So, yeah, you've got to choose carefully. Mm. I think the next one, the fourth one will be tricky. Maybe something like the Strand. Mm. Yes. Uh, that or the Strand yes. would work. Yeah. Whether I go to six, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know. I might not find six <laughs> okay. that are a thousand years old. Exactly. When do you, what's your downtime, Mike? What do you do in your downtime? What do you like to do? Bit of tennis, seek off the beach, mm. have a cup of tea. That's it, yes. Pretend I'm working when I'm not. Yeah. Say, oh, I can't do anything today. I'm really busy. They go, oh, no, we understand. You're really, really busy. Uh, then I go off and write another book. That's it. <laughs> and what would you like to do? Is there anything in the future, Mike, that you'd like to do that you haven't done yet? Uh, they just keep doing the same things, really. I mean, it's just having people want what you've got, i.e. someone saying, yeah, we want your new book, we want your new song, we want your programme, we want mm. your TV show. That's always the, I think that's always the key thing, isn't it? Mm. It's when people say, no, thanks, no, no. Yes, no, you, oh, rejection, okay, rejection, rejection. Yes, yeah, exactly yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's hopeless. So, so it's just lucky to be able to do it. But then again, I think you've got to be able to, you, you've got to be good at it mm. um, for people to want it. You've got yes. to be able to do it. Like anything, we all get an opportunity and you can see where that opportunity comes. You can maybe put yourself in the right place at the yes. right time. Uh, but when given it, you've got to come up with the goods. Otherwise, people will go, well, thank you very much. You know, yeah. we've seen what you can do. Yes. Do you like to collaborate with people, Mike? Do you like to work with other people or do you prefer to work by yourself? Only if it's the right person. Difficult to collaborate with someone on a book. On a song, mm -hmm. uh, it's easier. I uh wrote a lyric yesterday it just came to i was thinking about the man on the clapham omnibus you know that's been in british law since the victorian times uh, uh the voice of reason in court I, what would the man on the clapham omnibus think <laughs> i the ordinary man the faceless man in the street what would his opinion be in this which is being used by judges uh the, the, you know over well over 100 130 140 years uh so i wrote this lyric about the man on the clapham omnibus and i thought hmm there's a friend of mine in the states i know writes he's, he loves englishness and stuff they like love that. Englishness, so i yes. sent him to i sent it to him and i said yeah stick some music to this i could but i think it'd be nice to have a different take on it yes so sometimes you like collaborating i've worked with um uh phil springer who wrote the next time yes. for cliff he wrote mm -hmm. santa baby what was lovely monica is he said uh he said, tell me what Yip would do here, Mike. What would Yip do? <laughs> now, Yip Harburg was the guy that wrote the lyrics to The Wizard of Oz. And it, it really? was Phil's last big collaborator. And I thought, I'm his next collaborator after the guy that wrote the lyrics yes. to The Wizard of Oz. How this is amazing. Fantastic. How amazing. Tell me what Yip would do here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll do anything. Yes, is yeah. it? <laughs> and are you collaborating at all at the moment with anyone at all? I'm always happy to collaborate. Yes. Any suggestions? Yeah, well, I don't know. Ask this lovely audience and see who comes up. <laughs> there are certain things you can collaborate on. Yeah. I mean, well, well, musicals is one. Obviously, Eric mm. Coates. Yes. That music was pre-written. Uh, when I did the two albums with Betjeman, his lyric was pre-written and I did the music. When I did uh, the Rupert Brooke War Sonnets, I set to music with the King's College Choir and the Eton College Choir. Uh, that was my music and Rupert Brooke's words. So I, I like doing either. I like either doing the words or the music or both. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. And Mike, for the future, where do you see yourself for the future? Obviously, carry on doing what you're going to be doing. Um, but is there, is there anything? Can you see yourself going to America, for example, and working in America or doing something in America? Well, I hadn't really thought about it. I mean, I've been to America. I've mm. had I had my Oscar Wilde musical off Broadway. 
uh, which is fine. I think you have to sort of write, work on it all over again and go to America. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the zombies seem to be recent. They've just become massive again in the States after all these years and in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, and they said, oh, they said, if only we'd done this when we were in our 20s. I know. <laughs> we're touring across the country. Can't wait to get back to the hotel for yes. a cup of hot chocolate and a biscuit. <laughs> But, yes, when you're uh, younger, it's all very glamorous. But as you get a little bit older, it's not quite so glamorous, is it? Yeah, the screaming girls don't maybe hold the same appeal. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. let's get back to the hotel. Uh, but no, we had the, uh, I worked with the uh, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the American Rock and Roll yes. Hall of Fame, which over here recently. Uh, so did quite a bit with them and at Abbey Road, which is lovely. So that's uh, nice. great to meet those guys, because that's the big thing, to be an inductee of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, all the bands, all the artists want to be. So it was great working with them for a week. What was one song would you play, Mike, at um, your very special gathering or something? Is there one song that really stays with you that you've heard perhaps over the years? It's a new song, old song? Anything by Scott Walker. Mm -hmm. um, but there's one song I always pick as my favourite song. I wouldn't have it at a gathering because I'd like to listen to it by myself. And I allow myself to hear it once or twice a year only because I don't want to get fed up with it. And it's a track from the very first Yes album called Survival. Mm. And uh, I love it. Uh, John Anderson's voice is just wonderful. The whole band are wonderful. And, and John, years later, did one of my songs. And I thought, I'm again looking through the window in the studio thinking, ah, you sang my all-time favorite song and now you're singing one of my songs. And the producer, I said, I'd like to get him to do a three-part harmony. He goes, no, 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 you, you, he's obviously, mm. you know, on the minutes, don't, don't push him. And I said, no, no, I think, no, 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 we'll put harmonies on afterwards. Yeah. It won't be the same as his harmonies. And then John buzzed through, he said, do you want me to put the three-part harmony on? <laughs> Great, he got it. Oh right. my, well, so we've got to leave great. it there, but thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Monica. Thank you. Okay, after the break, I'll be joined by someone who is very well known on the dance circuit and is the lead vocalist for the dance anthems legend, Head Candy. Come back and join me as I talk to singer Soraya Vivian. Welcome back to the show and joining me now is singer and presenter Soraya Vivian who's going to talk to us about her career and her new single titled Colours of Love which will be raising much needed funds for the Kiev Pride in the Ukraine. Welcome to the show. Hello Monica, thank, thank you, you for Thank you so much me. for coming, really it's a pleasure. And I think we'll just go straight into this uh, lovely song that you're going to be actually showing the video, we're going to be showing the video of Colours of Love. Yeah. So how did that come about? I'm very, very fortunate to be um, a, a Pride ally and also an ambassador for quite a lot of international prides and I wanted to use my voice for, for something that obviously means something. And uh, we all know what's going on in Ukraine at the moment and um, especially with the persecution and uh, back in, up until 2013 when I used to be singing out in Ukraine. And, and oh obviously, really? Yeah. So you've actually been to the country? Yes, and, I've actually been yes. to the country, yeah. And also I used to perform in Russia and in, in a lot of the LGBT plus, you know, uh, friendly clubs and everything. Mm. And I've seen how they're all treated and uh, basically you know we have to we have to do something with, with, with what we've got and that's the reason why I thought you know what I'm going to do a pride anthem as you can tell, I'm from the north, and I uh, hooked up with a really talented guy called Max Restaino, who's uh, actually wrote the song. Um, he, he comes out of Steelworks with Elliot Kennedy. Oh, who, yes, you know, who yes, yes. Who wrote a lot of the Spice yes, Girl hits yeah. and everything. Elliot was great. He let us shoot the video there with all the drag queens and all my friends, which is great, actually, because the guy that shot the video as well, he did it for free, Monica. Um, That's really kind. Yeah, in memory of his nephew, who actually passed away with HIV. As you know, I'm a HIV ambassador. Yes. And uh, this is the reason why, you know, in Ukraine, they're struggling to get medication. And so I thought, you know, we, we need to, we just need to do something. It's all well and good just sitting back and not doing anything. And uh, use that voice, and especially all the prides that I'm performing, I, I thought, you know, yes. at the end of the day, if we can do some good, yeah, That's absolutely. And the video is, is lovely. It's very uplifting. Yeah. And it's a great tune as well. Oh, well, thank you. And, I'm, uh, you know, it's had an amazing reaction. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, all, all the drag queens and every one of them that mm. performed all wanted to do it for the right reasons and, uh, you know, wave the colours of love. And, uh, yeah, we had a great day filming that. And, you know, it, no big budget or anything. It's just to try to get the message for people to download the track to raise the funds. To raise the funds. You know, they've got... They can't even afford food. And, you know, um, I was with the uh, organiser of Keith Pride, a lovely, beautiful human being in London called Lemmy. And um, it's, it's just 
so so sad what's going on so we have to do what we can mm, i think it's wonderful and it's become the national anthem if you like isn't it they're going to be using that yeah, all that's the time. right yeah you must be very proud uh, of course i am a little yeah. old girl from yorkshire but Bless you. It's you know you you know if you've got enough you can give can't you yes and it's it's all well and good having this kind of title or whatever you want to do but you gotta you gotta use it mm. for the right reasons i just got a, a collection of my friends that i know are proper people that want to do it for the right reasons there's no agenda because we're all we're all all right, aren't we, Monica? Yes. But we're not living in a in a, in a country That's where there's right. a war, and also the the, the, the fighting already, uh, you know, to have their own voices heard, as you know, in Ukraine and obviously them countries out there, mm. same sex marriage is still illegal. Yes. So not only have they got to battle for that. It's just everyday life, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. Really? She told me a story. So obviously they, they are fighting for the country. So if they're in the same sex um, relationship and one of them sadly passes away, the other one can't even go to see them. Well, it, that's just heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. And so we have to make yeah. sure that Ukraine are not left behind yeah. with what's going on. And I'm doing the march with them at Liverpool because they're teaming up with Ukraine Pride this year so oh, I'm really looking wonderful. forward to that and when you went out there were you did it sadden you to see what was going on well did, what, where did you go did you go into yeah areas? I performed in Ukraine Fantastic. I performed in the capital oh. yeah I have performed in St Petersburg Moscow I used to be in in and out in and out in and out and uh, you know massive 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 gay scene out there fantastic brilliant the guy that t used to take me over Max absolutely wonderful um just fantastic experiences and it went from that to that to nothing. And it must have been so difficult, you know, yeah. for, for them to cope with that. I mean, the, the, your country's a war yes. and then you're being persecuted almost for, you for know, for you being are. who you are. Yes, yes, exactly. So this is this is the reason yes. why I want I to do imagine, this because yeah. I am such um, a supporter yes. of just being... Anything that's unjust, it just doesn't sit right with me, especially with, you know, the LGBT plus community have been very, very good to me with my career and may, always made me feel welcome. And, uh, you know, and, and they've given me a career and it's taken me all over the world. And at the end of the day, if you can do something mm. for that cause, then that's the reason why I want to do it. And, you know, Keith need money. Mm. They need money. And, you know, everybody likes music, like you said, and, yes. you know, it's uplifting it and is. everything in the song tells you what it's yeah. about. Now, when is this out? It's out on July the 28th, yes, is that that's right? right? Yes, So, yes. Um, people, will, where can people go and You can download, download it. it, it'll be on every digital platform going. Wonderful. Yeah, um, the label that it's with, um, the guys behind it have just been absolutely magnificent and uh, they're really, really driving it. And hopefully we're going to get more TV and press. And obviously, thank you very much for inviting me on the show. You're most it's, welcome. It's more about awareness and this is pride festivals you of know, course it is. I mean, we've got it's so many pride festivals oh, going on at the moment absolutely yeah. so this is a really lovely time for you to you know say well, like yeah, absolutely. Please, please support yeah absolutely and the one thing that I know about the community is that um, they're very 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 generous with your time and your money you know you're very caring you're very you're very aware of what's going on in the world why do you think that is well, you have to be, don't you? You are, if you if you if you're going to represent something, you need to know what is going on, and you need to be aware of absolutely everything. Because if you're interviewing me and asking me a question, and I don't know it, you know, there's no agenda with me. I I, I sing and I do what I do, and I'm really grateful for that. But you, if you, if you if you're given a position, you have to be able to do it and do it justice. And that's the reason why I'm so passionate about getting this pride anthem out. Because at the end of the day. You're going to meet one of the, the guys, or, or one of the drag queens from House of Soraya. At the end of the day, we're all really fortunate, Monica, aren't we? Mm. We are, very. We're, we're really, really yes, fortunate. we are. And, you know, we're going to go home and we've got some food on the table. Well, they haven't. And when Lemmy told me that, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't mm. grasp it. And I was thinking, right, so what are we going to do? And my, my ultimate ambition is to put sort of like a Live Aid sort of oh, like yes, concert that would on be, that would with be quite a lot of people that I know yes. that will just download... That one pound is another pound towards something. It's funny is because, you know, it, we don't realise, as you say, we sit here mm. and if you actually realise what they're actually going through living on a day-to-day -day basis, yes. it's really quite critical, you Massive. know, that something is done. So, you know, it, it, I applaud you for doing it. Thank and as you. I say, we're, we're going to show the video later on in the, in the programme. Um, I want to talk to you about your charity work as well. So oh, yeah. tell us about that. Uh, well, the charity work that I do, um, I do a lot for breast cancer. Um, I also am involved with... Um, um, a sexual health charity in Gran Canaria. Um, I'm the Pride Ambassador for 
the biggest European pride, Mass Palomas, Winter Pride. Right. Um, and I've been asked to sing their Pride Anthem this year, oh, which fantastic. I've done with Sharon O'Love. Um, and I've been presenting that for the last seven years. And it's a, a charity, a sexual health charity called Checkpoint. And uh, at this moment, we're trying to raise funds to try to get um, a full-time doctor basically so somebody can go and, and be treated yes. mm -hmm. as opposed to not knowing what they're going to do. But they're absolutely 100% behind what we're doing for Keith Pride because we're all in it together. Yes. That one person that needs that medication. Yes. It doesn't matter where yeah, you are in the world. It doesn't matter where you're in the world, does it? Exactly. Yes. Now, I do know in Kiev that they are getting some medication, the government are helping them, but they're in a war-stricken country, aren't they? And they're all... Fighting. It's very difficult. Mm. Very, very difficult. So Checkpoint, they've, they're have they getting behind it. Um, I'm also ambassador for Benidorm Pride, which is great. <laughs> uh, and they're getting behind it. And, and, and as, as, the, pro, as you know, the project moves forward, mm. I'm sure more awareness is going to come. And yeah. that one person that downloads that track, that's another person that's going to contribute to helping maybe give somebody a plate of food or give them that drug mm. that they need to help if they've got a sexual, um, you know, contracted a sexual disease or something like that so it's just all for the right for the right reasons for, because they're struggling yes you know and you clearly are very passionate about what you do and that Absolutely, comes across yeah. which, which yeah. is something and do you think that you know more could be done i've been involved with a with a company called bioshaw for around seven years and they do self-testing hiv kits right I walked in London Pride with them and it was it was just magnificent to see a lot of people not be, I mean, it has come, uh, the, a lot of people are a lot more aware that you can get these these testing kits now. But when it, like seven years ago, I actually did a TV show about it and you wouldn't believe how people are still victimised for it. You, you know, I have a lot of friends that, that are HIV positive and they're living the most amazing life and the most probably healthier than me and you, they get checked and everything. Yes. But sadly, sadly, the people that had to go before that have, have lost their lives, but we're in a position now where, you you know, there is an alternative and you make sure that you look after yourself and you just be careful and everything can be sorted out. Do you think there's still that stigma around HIV? Yes, I do, yeah. Mm. I think there always will be. I'm meeting Jonathan Blake um, and obviously he's legendary, he's sort of like, he was number six in the world to have contracted HIV. Yeah. He's in his 70s now and he's been an absolute, you know, legend and he's pioneered for drugs and he spoke to lots of people and he's still alive. And I think that that's an incredible legacy. Luckily in the UK to, you know, if, if you are gay or queer, whatever you want to say, um, you, it's more accepted. There's still a lot of homophobia, especially in America, but obviously in these Eastern countries, it's very, very hard for them to just be who they want to be. Well, and that saddens me. We're going to take a quick break, but stay with us. Thank uh, you. Come back and join me again in just a minute. Welcome back to the show. And now I'm joined by a lovely Ken who comes from the house of Soraya. Welcome to the lovely sofa. Thank you very much. It's, really <laughs> it's lovely to, to have you here. Really lovely. And Soraya, before the break, we were talking about your wonderful single, of course, Colours of Love. But I want to talk about the house of Soraya, which is why you're here, Ken. So tell us a little bit about it. An what is it? Amazing house. So okay. every, every city, every uh, county has a drag house. And Soraya's brought us together, um, Yorkshire folk <laughs> to, to make a drag house to really try and make a difference in the community obviously Soraya's already talked about the, the amazing work that she does throughout the community throughout well we're talking the world now we're yes. not even just talking the UK yes uh, so being an ambassador is just such an amazing thing for the community integrity that's that's where she comes from and and having her at the helm to really help us to get where we're going is going to be amazing. There's so much planned for this drag house. We've got everything from theatre tours to music. That oh, how recording. exciting! Yeah, the, the the sky's the limits. So getting up dressed in the yes. tassels today to come on and um, and support our house mother for Aww. the house of Soraya. Soraya, how does that make you, you feel? Old? No, <laughs> we say mama. Mama, say, mama yeah, they're all my children. Yes. But in fairness as well, Monica, you know, I brought them together because yeah. they're all really, really talented and they've all got their own stories. They've all yes. had their own 
you know, um, battles with everything, yes. haven't you? You know, comes from Doncaster, proper staunch northern town. And uh, I told them about the Pride Anthem and, uh, you know, a great singer. And we, he, he said, absolutely, Saray, I want to be on board for the right reason. And you're on the, you're on the video, Kane, as well, we're aren't you? We're in the video, we're yes. na-na-na-ri. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's such an amazing project to be yeah. in part of and, and to do it for our community. There's there's so many people that are underprivileged that don't have the support network at home. And you know what? If we can just spread the love, do it all for the right reasons. And you know what? We're all from Yorkshire. We say a spade to spade. Yes. Let's just get out there, help people where yeah. we can. We talked about Ukraine earlier. It's, it's, it's such a sad situation that we have and that we live in this kind of climate. And those people need support when you're up in Yorkshire do people support what you're doing do you know what they do they get yes. really behind it obviously there's some work to be done in the UK yes we're not there yet but we're so proud to actually live in a country where I can get up in this yes. kind of gig put a face of makeup on and walk even on the way down here we stopped off at the loo on the way yes. <laughs> on the motorway <laughs> I walked in do I walk into the gents or walk in late? Did it matter? It doesn't yeah. actually matter yes. because people are people and that's why the House of Soraya is so inclusive. People are people. People are human. Everybody's if... welcome in my house. Exactly. Oh. And exactly. Soraya, how, how many people have joined you so far? Uh, well, we've got this, um, we've got also, we've got a DJ, haven't we? Who's yeah. sort of, she's a, a BBC radio presenter, Becky Measures. And we've got six drag queens. Wonderful. Three and three. And so you're going to be going out on tour, yes, perhaps hopefully. doing some theatre. Yeah, hopefully. How exciting. Yeah. You know, and we were just talking, you know, this is very much, the summer's very much Pride Month, isn't yes. it? So yeah. we're this, Pride Month. Yes, yeah. exactly. So this is the time when for you to, you know, show your colours. I mean, you look amazing, by the way. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, yeah, that's right. And obviously the end game is, we've got, we're got we having a film crew follow us, and the end game is, is that I'm very, very fortunate that I'm going to be performing in South Africa for Mr Gay World, and they're all going to be singing the chorus Wonderful. Of love, which is going to which is the message. So is the House of Soraya coming with you, so to speak? Are We're in negotiations at the yes. moment. We're in negotiations at the moment because obviously they've all got their own lives as of well. Course, and they've all yes. got their own careers as well. Yes. Um, and uh, it's really exciting and we're going to take you on that journey, Monica, Wonderful. to show you what they're all about and the struggles that you've had as well. Yeah. And Ken, tell us about that. You know, if you share with us some of the struggles that you've had, that you've yeah. had to experience. I mean, growing up in a, in a working class northern town, as you can tell, my accent is very Yorkshire. <laughs> you you don't get the best reception being out of this drag. I am just, to be quite fair, I'm quite boring. I'm just a gay man. <laughs> but there are so many people that identify so many different colours, hence the colours of love, um, that, that need a voice. Yeah. They don't want to be sat in their bedrooms pretending or putting putting drag on. They want to be out there doing it and feel confident in doing it. And if the community surrounding them isn't, well, supporting, supportive, yeah. supportive yes. um, they're not going to do it. And letting them express themselves. Yeah, yeah. mental health is such a huge part Massively of our agenda. So. Yeah. Um, and we've got people in our house that really need, are having support on that. And yeah. we're really open, we're talking about it as well, because the more you talk about a situation, the better things are yes. going to be. So yeah, we, we're there as the voice for the people who haven't got the voice. And Shirley, she's in the video, yes. and she's actually in the middle of transition at the moment. Yeah. Nice. And uh, from, from Halifax, absolutely hilarious one of the most funniest human yeah. beings you'll ever meet in your life gifted talented fantastic oh. dj but got got mental health issues because mm. little halifax is is not the place where a transgender boy grows up do you know what i mean yes, I do. and she's come into our house and she feels at home yeah it's like it's like group therapy it when is. we all get together. I was just about to say that. It sounds like somewhere they can all come and, and, and be true yes. and, and be honest and yeah. open. Be themselves. And be themselves, yeah. yes. And we have every everyone under the spectrum as such yes. in the house. Yeah. And, and like Saray always says, the door is open to anybody. Yeah. Um, and everyone's individual talents. So, yeah, we, we're really happy and really, really fortunate yes. to have the talent around us and Soraya being her voice oh. and, and for you Sarah, it, it, you know obviously you've done this and yeah. and you're and you're helping and you're supporting but it must mean so much to you to know that you are giving back to the community yes a million percent mm -hmm. absolutely they are my community because they're just beautiful human beings and I'd, wherever you go you are you know you meet good and bad in everyone mm -hmm. i'm not interested 
and what your gender is. I'm interested and I can judge you on the person that you are. Are you a good person? Are you a good human being? That's enough for me. I'm not interested in anything else. I mean, so. luckily, I've been really fortunate to grow up in a family that's accepted me for everything. I mean, sadly, my mum passed away two years ago. Um, oh, I'm sorry. But I never, I didn't, well, I wasn't a drag queen before then. Um, and she gave me the, the real oomph. <laughs> but you was yes. bullied at school, wasn't yeah. you? Yeah, bullied yeah. at school, all that kind of thing. But yeah, so I think you go through phases in your life that change you as a person and then you become what you end up are supposed to be. Incredible speaking to you oh, both. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Thank you. Now we're going to play your new single out on the 28th of July yeah. called The Colours of Love. So would you like to introduce it? Kia Pride Anthem for 2023. Please download it. Even if you just give one pound, you are going to make such a big difference. Unite and wave the colours of love. So wave your colours of love. When you're alone in the darkness, you know there's nothing to fear. You may be far, but remember, I will always be here. You're the survivor who always makes it to the other side. Like a star shining brighter in the darkness of night. Love's the answer you will win every time. Let's break the chains and let it shine. So when you call us the 